U.S. President Obama signed an executive order imposing sanctions against Russian officials over Crimea. These include visa bans and asset freezes. European leaders are also exploring sanctions. There's mixed reaction to the idea of sanctions, though. To talk more about this, I'm joined by Ray Zuccaro, live from Miami. He's with SW Asset Management. Also joining us here in the studio is Mihaila Karstai, and she is the Deputy Director of the Energy and Environment Program at the Atlantic Council. Why don't we start with you here in the studio? Let's talk broadly. Uh, will sanctions work? Can they work? It really depends. Um, sanctions historically have only worked in a few instances where you had concerted action by all the international community. In this case, I don't think the Europeans are there yet uh, because of the magnitude of the economic codependency between Russia and Europe. Ray, let me ask you the same question. Uh, can these sanctions work? Well, what's been laid out so far in terms of sanctions have actually been pretty weak. My concern is that you, you will see a, a, a further sanctions put on the U.S., perhaps, as, as Mikhail mentioned, unilaterally by the U.S., but my concern is the U.S. will, in terms of, they won't have a military or an, a, 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 an actual arms race, but they'll, they will go after an economic war and severely increase sanctions, and specifically on the banks and potentially the Russian operations of banks in the United States. Let me get a reaction from both of you, a couple of comments on the sanctions. Uh, first off, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, he's warning the U.S. that sanctions against Russia would hit the United States like a boomerang. Uh, why don't we start with you? Do you believe that? Um, I think our relationship with Russia is small enough where we won't be hit too hard. But this is, I guess, the worry that the Europeans have, that the sanctions imposed on Russia could come back to haunt them. And, Ray, do you think that the, the boomerang potential is really there? Yes, I do. I think you, you look at the U.S., especially on the energy sector and the multinationals, they do have operations in Russia. And again, the boomerang, you could see nationalizations and, and companies taking over, their assets taken over in Russia as an economic tit for tat. And then Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut said this today, our sanctions are pretty toothless without Europe as part of that package. Are the sanctions at this stage, are they toothless? Um, they are all, but from my perspective at least, uh, if the Europeans would join in and have the same sort of stance as we do, an a little bit stronger stance, we may see a larger effect. But currently, um, I don't think that the current actions that the president has proposed are going to have a huge effect. And, Ray, how about you? Do you think there's a bite to these sanctions at all? Again, what's been laid out so far, I don't think there is much of a bite. It's not even a slap on the wrist, frankly. It's a, basically a slap on the pinky. My concern is what is going to come. Uh, my big concern, again, is, is if you can exclude the Russian banks from the international financial system. If, if the U.S. chooses, the economic sanctions can be severe, even if they are unilateral, unilateral it will cause the, the financial system of Russia to suffer. And Senator Murphy also said Europe is not where they need to be right now, which I think we all can agree on that. Um, but again, you talked about uh, the interconnected quality of this. Uh, the United States is probably a little bit easier to do this sort of thing. Europe, it's a different ballgame altogether, isn't it? A hugely different ballgame because, um, first of all, Europe gets 30% um, of its energy from Russia. Just um, uh, in that field, you see a huge dependency where Europe cannot impose unilaterally sanctions on Russia. At the same time, though, Russia will suffer greatly if sanctions are imposed. A hundred million dollars per day are uh, going to Russia just from the gas exports. And, Ray, uh, I want to get your thoughts on that, too. Uh, you know, how does, how does the United States exert any pressure on its European partners? Given the fact that uh, they, there is a more of an interconnected quality there versus the United States, frankly, that will be a problem. I mean, as Miguel mentioned, the economic inter interconnection of Europe and Russia is, is frankly larger than the U.S. Um, and will cause problems in terms of in terms of a, a uniform response. And the other thing that we're seeing with Europe, uh, and we've reported on this a lot, especially on Biz Asia America, is you've had a lot of EU countries that have really struggled. And uh, the fact of the matter is, if if the balance starts tipping, and, and this could really have an impact on the entire global economy, and I think that's another thing that people are looking at and perhaps taking a step back from. Would you agree? Uh, yes, it definitely can destabilize. I don't think we're going to see sort of a... Um, series of defaults or the economy really going to pieces, the global economy, but especially the fragile European recovery will definitely suffer and there will be an economic cost um, 
even from worsening relations with Russia. And that's the other thing, uh, Ray, we're hearing that a lot in Britain, is that there, there's this concern about the global economy and what impact this might have. That's kind of making them reluctant as well. Your thoughts on that? Look, I mean, Russia in, is in the classic, one of the pillars of their classic bricks. If, if Russia, again, if the sanctions were the point where the U.S. financial institutions a huge asset managers like Calper's Investments are, are banned from investing in Russia. That will have huge implications both on Russia and the global financial system, without a doubt. So, Ray, there aren't a lot of tools uh, that can be used in this crisis, are there? At this point, this, in Mr. Putin's mind, my my opinion is he's not really worried about the economy, economic implications of this. He's trying to rebuild the sort of former Soviet Union piece by piece first starting with Crimea, and then perhaps with other pieces of Ukraine. This is a much bigger issue geopolitically right now. And, and frankly, the economic sanctions that have been laid out, I don't think are really going to be deter his uh, ultimate ambition. I'm going to give you the last word. Um, I think we're going to have to use uh, the economic tools. I think that's the weakest uh, part of Russia, and especially Mr. Putin's wallet, is probably the most sensitive part we can act on. Well, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you both uh, for joining us this evening. Certainly appreciate it.